Hello, my name is Emi Jazeri and I'm the Director of Instructional Support at the Physics Department. I'm the Principal Investigator of the PEARL Project. PEARL stands for Physics Experiments Access Remotely Laboratory. Traditionally, physics experiments are very hands-on and the students interact with the equipment to control the experiment, make observations, and collect data. During COVID, we started sending kits to our students to do the experiments at home and give them the opportunity to still be able to develop some of the hands-on skills. Nevertheless, there are certain experiments that cannot be duplicated using these kits due to safety reasons, cost, and complexity. The outcome of this project allows students to remotely access experiments and control them through the internet. We have converted a number of experiments that are controlled either mechanically or electronically to achieve this goal. In some instances, we had to modify the traditional laboratory setup in a way to be able to fit the model that we had in mind. My team members now introduce themselves and explain what they have achieved so far. Hi, my name is Jeremy Ryan, and I've built this mechatronics module. We're using an Arduino board to create a wireless network that students can communicate to through a web interface. They will be able to control this stepper motor, which is powered by a power supply, and will run this drive belt, which will position this center platform. In this particular experiment, we have it set up with an object lens, a focusing lens, and a screen. When students position the center platform, they can take a measurement of the object on the screen and the position of the lens and be able to determine the focus length of the lens through a web camera. Hello, my name is Eric Deck and I'm a fourth year physics student here at UC Berkeley. Over the last couple of months, I've been working with my colleague, Jeremy Ryan, to build this setup that allows students to explore oscillatory motion. By controlling this off-the-shelf wave driver, as well as a custom-built linear rail system, students are able to control both the amplitude and frequency of waves, as well as the tension on the cord that we're driving. This will allow students to explore oscillatory and wave-like motion in an introductory class, so, as one example, here, if I apply a frequency, you can see that on our screen we have decoherent motion. As I change the frequency applied to this wave, you'll see that we eventually find standing waves. And if my colleague Jeremy adjusts the tension, you'll be able to see that the character of the standing waves changes. We're also able to control this via a remote access computer, and students can observe this core directly via a camera. I'm here to demonstrate both custom software and hardware I've built to allow students to remotely control physical experiments from anywhere in the world. Here you can see that I have custom control software that allows these digital dials to communicate with a microcontroller running dedicated control software, and turn these motors mounted to our apparatus via custom 3D printed parts that I've designed. So in essence, if I turn these digital dials, I can control the correct voltage and the correct current into our power supply, allowing us to observe this beam of plasma bending inside of this bowl, which would allow a student to make a measurement of the charge to mass ratio of an electron and learn about electromagnetics and particle physics. Hi, I'm Billy Pierce, and I developed the software module. Uh, what this module allows you to do is act as the software interface between the students on the front end and the electronics we're controlling on the back end. If you see here, you, if you look here, you can see the scheduling side of things. So let's say I was a student, I wanted to do a lab tomorrow at 12 p.m. I could here click sign in order to sign up for that time slot. If I realized it didn't work for me, I could click sign again to unsign up for it. I can move around and sign up for multiple different time slots. And if another student is signed up for a time, I can't also register for that same time slot. It requires me to sign up with my Berkeley email, which acts as a really nice authentication function to make sure students aren't able to randomly sign up for things. We have other security features to limit the number of signups they can have in a certain time period and other things like that.
In addition, once this data is, once the signup is scheduled, it means that only during your time slot can you push data to the back end, which will make sure that students aren't able to write or change the lab when they're not physically there, and will also make sure that only students who are currently doing the lab are able to view the video.